It's about time, friends. Hey, this is my 100th broadcast. 100th live broadcast. I did not realize that. I'm going to wait on some folks to get on here before I get going. Hopefully, my Facebook peeps are going to reach out to you to get you on here. Susan Wathen, I see you've joined. Brittany, about time you get on here. Hmm. Hey, is that still going in there? Is it saying if it's going? Will Webb, hey buddy. Roy Fraser, I want to hear about... I want to hear about um, this pizza place, unless we're not going, uh, unless we're not going live here. Is it still not working? What? I need what? Maybe it's like, are we working? I can't tell if my if we're live or not. Is it on? Can people hear me? Can you hear me in there? Hey, David Ross. Monica. Is this Nick? Rob Powell, of course it's not. Buddy, get in here, man. Good to see you. Shane Ray. Thank you, Brittany Renee. Jason Leonard. Man, I hear you're going to build us a... <laughs> a new building. Roy, Roy Fraser. Roy, can you come over here and help me with my, um, can you come over and help me with my dial-up internet? Roy, I do want to hear more about uh, that pizza place over there. Hey, Coach Herzer, thank you for joining. Everybody, I appreciate you coming on here, sharing. Thank you, Teresa. Good to see you. Hey, Everybody needs a coach in life. Michael Burt has joined the studio, and Michael Burt taught me a lot about what we're going to be talking about tonight. Thank you, Holly. Every, uh, hey, Monica, tell, tell Mark I said hello. Tammy, I would show you our little boxer if you want to come over here and see it. Lucky, our, our lucky dog. Uh, if, for, for the people where you, this is shared, my name's Tommy Davidson. I go by Good Time Tommy, hashtag GTT. I am a real estate agent in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And what I like to do on Thursday nights is my show called Straight From The Gut. I'm not as animated as I normally am during the day because I feel like, uh, who here likes dial up? Mama, thank you for joining. Uh, I like to, um, to talk about my story. Hey, Doyle Cox, you remember the old days. Uh, I like to share my story from um, back in the day when uh, you're looking phase three. Dude, Rob Powell, I'm gaining weight, man. I gotta, I gotta uh, start losing weight. But I'm, uh, I'm a very open person, and I like to share what I've been through because I want to help other people get better. So, uh, people that haven't struggled, people that I don't want to say if they've had a silver spoon, if you've, if you've all, I've got a lot of friends that have never really seemed to struggle. They've all just, everything's kind of gone their way. Now they've all had some setbacks, but I want to reach the people that have just had some really, really bad times where it felt like, man, I'm never getting over this. But uh, I do want to say this. If you share the stream, I do pick uh, me and Kathleen Sparkle. We're going to pick somebody, whoever shares this, there'll be a lucky contestant. If you share this and you're chosen, I do give you a, a gift card from the Alley on Main. The Weatherman, about time you get here, buddy. We can't do this show without you. Weatherman. Joy Holt's on here. Joy, I, I saw some of your fine work today out there in Harvest Woods. But, uh, Joey Holtz, you remember them old days? Struggle, seeing the struggle, the struggle. Hey, Rob Powell's on here, Joey Holt. But, 
One of the things back in the day that I really, really, really struggled with was bouncing back. And I didn't understand that until Coach Burt one day was talking about what are people's bounce back factors. That means if uh, you, Riverdale War, that's right, Heather Russell. Um, thank you, Kathleen. Uh, everybody, check out my YouTube page. We're trying to grow that. Kathleen is, she's hustling and grinding every day. Uh, David Ross, you did get it yesterday. Thank you, man. And David Ross, I appreciate your story too, man. You're an open guy like me. We talk about things. But I want to talk about back in the day, me and uh, Belinda Arinder. Linda Douglas said, hello, he loves you, man. Love you too, Doug. Uh, Doug, thank you for doing everything in the house. Couldn't do it without you, buddy, that TV. Hey, Randy, go Wildcats, man. But everybody that's joining here, I don't know if Belinda, she's never been a struggler like me. She's gone through tough times, but um, there's people out there that uh, have just kind of never seemed to get breaks to go their way. And I, hey Jared, I'm getting a little off track here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get focused. I, I, I apologize. I'm gonna talk back to when um, I'm 43 years old, and. Probably I struggled until uh, 35, 36 years old with things probably bothered me too much. My bounce back wasn't good enough. And what I mean by that is things didn't go my way. It took me too long to get past them. I really struggled. So I would get down and uh, I wouldn't be as productive as I should be because my feelings were hurt or I was a victim. And I hate to say that, but obviously there was things that were bothering me that were preventing me from moving forward. So I'm gonna to talk to you about bounce back. How do you get your bounce back better? How do you improve that? Because you can improve your bounce back. I know because I personally have improved my bounce back. And this isn't only in, uh, hey, who's crying? Somebody's crying there. Um, it isn't only with work, but it's, it was also in relationships, friendships, the bounce back factor. Uh, there, were, there were things that just wouldn't go my way and they would dominate me. It's easier for me to bring it into either a relationship or into work. I know, hey, Ann, any day we're going to have that baby. For work, it might be if I was so focused... I was so focused on one transaction, one deal, and if there was a problem with that one file, because maybe that's the only thing I had going on because I wasn't working hard enough to have more things going on in my life. That one deal would just totally dominate my thoughts. Hey, Matt Crane, thank you for sharing. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Matt Crane, please be sure to share this stream. Thank you, Matt. But, um, I would struggle so long with overcoming things. Let's let's talk about football analogies. If you're Tom Brady or any player out there, if you threw an interception and you didn't overcome it fast enough, you go into the tank. Well, think about how quickly these professional athletes have got to overcome overcome the the last bad play. Well, too often in life, our last play keeps us down for for way too long. Think about that. Most of us should be able to relate to that. We all can't relate to somebody that's gone out and made a ton of money or things have gone their way, but we should all be able to relate to when things just suck. For me, at 35 years old, my life just seemed to suck. 35 years old, going through a breakup and uh, financial, just it, it was so bad for me. And uh, I, I was feeling sorry for myself and I did not know how to get past this. I didn't know how to get better. I didn't know what I was gonna do. All I knew how to do was like fixate on the problem and complain about it. It's all, it always has to be about next. That's right. And uh, Belinda, you're right. Some people can just get over things a lot easier where other people, they really battle the rejection part a lot more than others do. And for, for a long time, I battled that. Whenever I was rejected, I took it so personally. But there's ways to improve on that. So I'm gonna tell you three steps that I have thought of, and I'm gonna add more as you ask more questions. And uh, some people may have something they'd like to add to it. But for me, one of the ways that helped me, one of my three was I decided I wanted to do more. 
I was not going to just focus on one activity. I was going to, I, I decided to have a bigger focus. I was going to think about more. I wanted to do more. Matt, I see you loving this. I really want you to uh, comment on this because uh, I know you can provide some great insight. But I decided I was going to do more. Instead of worrying about one person, one, one uh, closing, one person, one relationship, I remember if I were to call or text somebody and they did not respond to me, uh, it would bother me so much. I mean, it would fixate it. Why didn't they call me back? And I didn't know it at the time, but that's just plain victim thinking where I'm blaming somebody else. But I've decided now, like today, let's fast forward from 35, 36 years old to where I'm at today, I forget I text people. If they don't ever respond to me, it's like I don't even remember. And the only reason why that is is because I focused on doing more. People ask me all the time, why, why, like if I'm sitting there talking to them, I've got to find ways to create time to get everything done that I want to. So I'm, it may be rude. I, I mean, I, I hate to say that, but my girlfriend in there, she constantly is complaining about what I'm doing, but I'm trying to create more time where I can get more things done. And uh, whenever I made that commitment, thank you for sharing that with me. Whenever I made that commitment to doing more and to have a bigger focus, the smaller things didn't seem to bother me more. Think, you know, sometimes somebody brings you a little first shot only rule, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Andy, I think forever I was afraid to do something. I, would, I wasn't going to do something until I felt it was perfect. I wouldn't do it until I thought, man, there's no way I, I can fail if I do it right now. But what I've decided is every time I fail, I learn something from it. So now I don't look at failure as anything other than a learning experience. It does not hurt my feelings at all to fail at something. I feel like if uh, if you overanalyze, I'm a big believer in activity. The more activity you do, the the more results that are going to come your way. And you can't get results if you're uh, afraid to fail at something, if you're afraid to look stupid. Number two was uh, what uh, um, getting a better understanding of rejection for my bounce back. I didn't take things as personally because I understand just because someone they may not like, uh, they may not uh, like what I said or they may not like what I did. I don't take that personally because we, uh, we all have the way we think and the way we feel and that does not mean we're right. That, that, that only means it's the way we think, the way we feel. Feelings are real, but they're they're not always right. So remember that. So whenever somebody's got a comment or I, whenever I decide to do this whole uh, Good Time Tommy, worst case scenario, it may cost a few bucks. They can't eat you. That's right, Jason. You 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 gotta you gotta move forward. You gotta uh, you gotta have activity. You got to force yourself into doing something. If you don't, you'd never move like I did. I never tender heart. My buddy Brent Long's in, on here. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> um, so, what does rejection mean? Because I think that's why so many people really struggle with the bounce back. Is they feel rejected. They don't feel like they're good enough. But it does not mean that. Think about how often you, I go out to eat roughly, usually about three times a day. Well, now since I've got a, a live in, hey, I got a roommate. How often, I still go out twice a day, but think about how often I reject something. I even have to reject pizza every day now, but it doesn't mean I don't want it. So often we, we take it so personally if they don't want what we have to offer right now. But we shouldn't look at it like that. There's going to be more people that are going to come in that want what you have. Don't focus on the ones that uh, in this particular moment, they're not looking for what you have to offer. Don't take it personally. Do not take it personally. Another thing that really helped me with this is I read a book called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And Dale Carnegie wrote that book, and he gave a great illustration of how one person that may be talking, no, no, Sal's is our favorite. That's right, weatherman. We got to get back into Sal's. Dale Carnegie talks about how you may say something and how the other person may hear it and how they may feel about it. 
Coach Bird, add some comments on, on the bounce back because you're my expert when it comes to, to bouncing back. Tell us, tell us your story. Share us, share with us your little story. Hey, Trevor Skipper, how's the financial world? Are we going to hit, is the Dow going up every day, Trevor Skipper? And I want to give, I do want to give a plug to, um, to my girlfriend, Brittany Renee Brandon. She just made the Saul's post. She is very good at, um, at bouncing back because she can have a bad day or a bad moment and the next day she's okay. And that's one of the things that, um, that I really appreciate about her is how quickly she gets over things. Think about, think about the people that, and I'm not trying to do a mushy post, uh, tender heart. So I don't, I don't, I don't want to see that face or that comment, but think about what it's like to be around someone where it never seems to bother them. You're going to attract more people into your life. You're going to, if problems never really show up in your face or the way you're acting, it's amazing that problems don't gravitate towards you. It's really whenever uh, Teflon Don. People, hey, uh, Adam Valentine, thank you for tuning in, buddy. Try fits in the house. Um, it's almost uh, a sticker that says, was it a bad day or was it a bad moment that melted into a, that melt? You're exactly right. So often, Belinda, if there's a bad moment for a lot of people, it does turn into a bad day. Could turn into a bad two days. For me, that's happened quite a bit. But, I, I, but I've started, one of the things that I really have focused on is I stopped listening to what my feelings were telling me because I'm an emotional cat. I have always reacted out of emotions in the moment. I never have stopped and thought about the situation. It's, it's almost like it's a, it's a reflex. It happens so fast where um, I don't even have, to, I didn't even have time to process it. Hey, 1405 a mile drive just joined us. So, um, negative feelings, the longer those gray clouds hover. Yeah, you you are going to attract these, the, the gray clouds or the negativity. It just finds a way to keep coming to you. I mean, you can call it a spiritual, universe, godly, whatever you want to say, but I really do believe that God keeps sending you these tests. And if you're handling it in a negative way, you're going to have more things to continue to be negative about. Whatever you want to call that. But uh, I do believe in that. So how do you get a better understanding of, of rejection? A lot of us have got to deal with that. And I tell people it's okay to deal with pain. A lot of people want to ease, ease things to where they don't have to deal with any pain. But I'm I'm a believer that you've got to you've got to experience pain. That's the way we grow. If I wouldn't have gone through all my painful times in 2009, 2010, it would have never forced me to get into a better situation. So uh, the more you're doing this, the one thing that's going to help you with, you with is your confidence. Jackson Jordan, rough country. Confidence. If, if you know you can go out and do something. And then you have a minor setback. If you know, like, let's just take somebody that's made millions and billions of dollars. If they lose the money because of something, they still have the confidence to go back out there and make it because they know how to do it. Pain is a sign of growth, Dale Jr., the master closer. Thank you for tuning in here, buddy. Dale Jr., what I'm talking about tonight is bounce back. Michael Kenny, thank you for joining, buddy. Talking about bounce back. Anything you'd like to add to this? Hey, Big A, it did get us. That was one of the, 2010 was probably the only time you ever really had to face some bounce back, big guy. I feel, I feel like I, tra I attracted a lot of bounce back, and I never got good at it until uh, I started training my mind on how to handle it. It is a mental thing. Bounce back, it's all mental. You can get better at bouncing back. Barbara Corcoran, she is on Shark Tank. She was a, um, a, uh, a big-time 
real estate. I guess she was an agent and uh, she, um, she owned a real estate company in New York City. So she was around a lot of people. I think she's probably worth several hundred million dollars. But she was, someone asked her, what's the difference between somebody that made $35,000 a year and somebody that made $1 million a year? Hey, about time we get you on here, Coach Burt. She said the single biggest reason, or the single biggest difference between those two people, one was a low performer, one was an extremely high performer, was their ability to overcome setbacks. That's bounce back. You're tough, tough old baby. <laughs> Kim Neese, thank you for joining. Coach Woodall, buddy. I uh, appreciate everybody. It's it's moving a little fast, but Tony Woodall was one of the most influential people for me during this uh, this time. It's kind of my own rebirth where I started to rebuild myself from nothing, just flat busted. Stevie Z, thank you, buddy, for for joining. So you need to get around people that can help you understand. I think we were talking about our emotions and how powerful they are in the moment because they can really, they can really, uh, how you react to the situation, not the situation, how you react, what do you mean RJ? How you react to the situation, not the situation. Um, but forever, I was one of those people that would react in the moment. Didn't matter what it was, relationship, a business deal, I would get mad, I would get offended so easy. Coach Burr, who was it that said whenever someone talks about you behind your back, it's none of your business? I can't remember who you said that, but. Hey, can y'all hear me? Can't tell Kira Camp I did talk to her buddy today, and I got to call him back tomorrow. Tell Leah Hewlin I said hi. Hey, former Miss Tennessee, I said hello. We're talking about bounce back. Tony Woodall, you've bounced back, friend. You've, you've got things going your way. Maybe you'd like to share some of your story. Storm is out of here. You keep pushing the limits of your grand signal chief. Thank you, the storm working late. I am drinking water for my throat because I've been talking about 22 minutes and it starts to bother me. Number three, people have got to stop being so sensitive. Man up. You got to man up. We take action, not reaction. Woo, Dale Childress, that's good. I'm a big believer in taking action. We happen two things. David Estes, man. David Estes, you're a guy that went through a lot. You bounced back. I hope you don't mind me telling your story. But, man, I admire everything that you overcame and how well you're doing right now. But you, you've got to stop listening to yourself whenever things go against you because they go against everybody. So you've got to stop listening to what things are, what your mind's telling you. You've got to start talking to yourself. you got to talk to yourself. So when things don't go my way, I start to, I start talking to myself. You'll, I know what you mean. You'll never hide your story. Hey, that's why you're an authentic dude, David. People love, they love it if you'll come on and you'll, um, you'll be honest. Don't ever cut back. Just make more money. Brent, golfers have to have bounce back. You know, think about, we were talking about that today, you know, or maybe we were talking about it yesterday, but think about how often a golfer, things don't go the way they want. They, 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 they've got to have so much mental toughness. How, how are you, how are you helping your own bounce back? What are you doing? A lot of it comes down to reading, following other people. Michael Burt turned me on to Grant Cardone, and I've been following that guy since he was on Michael Burt's first radio show. This was probably five years ago. You you got to uh hey you had a refill tonight not like I'm counting or anything hey that's water I'm drinking Brittany Renee a refill but the way you get over this stuff is you've got to really work on yourself there's these little muscles in your head that will help you get past this but they'll never be activated like the guns right here my guns they'll never be activated unless you start training it. The best thing I did was I hired a coach. Squirrel. <laughs> I hired Coach Burt. I don't know if he's still on here. But I, I tell him every year I spend more money with him, but every year I have more breakthroughs. Financially, my mind expansion, there's always something that I'm getting out of it. The, as a matter of fact, 
His bill goes up every year, but the gap is widening on my return that I'm getting out of it. The gun show, water guns. David, I need you to come on to Real Estate 101. Does anybody have any other questions about this bounce back? Come on, fire something at me. Hey, Carrie Latham, I didn't see you were on here. Thank you for joining, friend. So, so think about what makes up your current feelings, your current emotions. So much is traced back to our past. So much is traced back to a friend's past. So much is traced back to what we think we know. So much is traced back to something we don't even know. We just think we know. All that stuff. What up, dog? Hey, Mark Gunner. Go Irish, buddy. So much of our past plays a huge part in our bounce back. Until we get control over it. Until we start understanding better how we're going to get through this. So it goes to a root. Weatherman, you're exactly right. That, that's exactly right, man. It's, but it's so hard. It's extremely hard when things are going bad to want to get back up. That's our past. That's our emotions. What was the most helpful tool to learn, overcome rejection, increase your bounce back? Danielle was really hard. Tony Woodall told me the two hardest things I'd ever do is to believe in me and to change. And he was right. So what I had to do to get over bounce back is I had to believe in myself more and I had to agree to change. I had to start chat. Leah Hewlin, Miss Tennessee has joined us. But uh, you're exactly right, Belinda. The most successful people can bounce back. And I, I don't know if they just got a, something that other people are not blessed with, but you can work on bounce back. You can work on that. Some people, you know, I was a, I was a, mom, that's a lot of stuff you put in there. I appreciate that. But Danielle, you can train your mind to start overcoming things. I think you, you can't be sensitive. You've got to, uh, you've got to train yourself more. You've got to read more. You've got to want to do more. But uh, you've got to, you've also got to have a better understanding of why you were rejected. You can't take it as personal. Well, some people, they got to, Belinda, but what about the people that need to, but they don't bounce back? Mama and Doug. Uh, yeah, some people, they're they have to, but they just don't ever do it. Keep moving, focus on end result. You do have to begin with the end in mind. That's exactly right, Carrie Latham. Joe Rich. Joe Rich is on here. I think he's at a basketball game. He probably can't even hear. He's just trying to get his credit, weatherman. You know, like most coaches will say, Andy, it's you're either motivated by pain or potential. I was motivated by both. I was going through a painful time, but I also knew that there was too much out there that I could do that I was not. And the way I started getting better, the way I started getting over this was, man, I started focusing like some people go to the gym to get their body in shape, get eat better to, to be in better shape. I went to work on my mind. How the average CEO of a Fortune 500 company, I think, reads 50 to 60 books per year, whereas the average person just reads maybe one book a year. How much time are you reading other people? And today, it's so easy to learn with YouTube, books on tape. You can learn from other people. You got to get a mentor. You got to find somebody. I don't recommend listening to a lot of people because you'll get a cloudy message and you may not understand it. I believe in finding one person and studying them until you know everything about them. That's what I believe. But I, I do believe. I think sometimes it's easier to be the victim, do the hard work. That's right, Craig Powell. You've been through some stuff, buddy. Proud of you. Hey, I hope you come to our Lane Trains Automobile event on the 12th of March. Kathleen, it is. 
a lot of times we don't know where those wounds came from. But like Stephen says, there's a root. There's something. I read a book, um, John Etheridge, Heart of the Wild, or uh, what was the, there was a book. And he talks about everybody has a wound in their childhood. Or Stephen says there's a root. There's always something that points back to us in our childhood that that causes a wound. There's a void there that can you're never going to replace it, but if you can understand what caused it, you can start. You got to go back there before you can start working on things. Wild at heart, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, Alfie? Wild at heart. Wild at heart was that book that talks about. Um, it talks about everybody having a wound. You know, you go through it. It's all about your attitude. It's about it's about your attitude. It's a have you read that book, Kathleen? <laughs> I'm Tristan Joy Holt. But um, the the three things I've taught, preach, Reverend. Hey, I want to hear you preach. Hey, a lot of people don't know that the weatherman, he's a preacher. Uh, the three things of bounce back. You got to commit to doing more. You got to have a better understanding of what rejection is. You cannot take it as personal. You've got to learn to build your confidence. And all your confidence, it comes from within. There's no such thing, in my opinion, as external confidence. It's fake if it is. Because confidence, it derives from inside you. That's where God put it. Number three, you've got to stop being so sensitive. you got to man up. People are offended by my language, so I'm trying to tune it down a little bit. I believe that you've got to stop talking to yourself I'm sorry, you got to stop listening to yourself and start talking to yourself. Birthday boy, John Jones, about time you get on here. We can get, you're about 30 minutes late, but I'm glad you're on here, big guy. Happy, happy birthday, fella. Me and uh, Michael Burt went to listen to Dr. Kevin Elko, and Kevin Elko is really Nick Saban's go-to team psychologist. He goes to him for himself, I'm sure, but uh, Elko was talking about this, and what he what he said was the the quote I've said twice now was, "You've got to stop listening to yourself and start talking to yourself, because you're because whatever you're thinking somehow usually happens, whether it's good or bad. It's almost like our body, our mind. It doesn't discriminate. It's whatever our thoughts are somehow." we end up that manifest. And I'm not talking about the secret. I'm not talking about thoughts happening because it takes a whole lot more than just a thought. But if you're in a negative mindset, you're probably gonna have more negative things. You're gonna attract more negative things. Thank you, Kathleen, for the for the Good Time Tommy YouTube page. What about, what if you're in a positive mood? You know what it's like. Tim Hooper, he's always in a good mood. If you ever see his post on Facebook, he's full. He's the energy guy. The secret's not, I, hey, I'm calling BS on the secret, but I do believe everything starts with a thought. And it, your thoughts will lead to something. You do hear the dryer back there, Brittany Renee. Thank you, Paul. Um... John, what do you have? John, you've seen, John, you know what? I'm going to, John, one time I was telling John something, and John is somebody, He he's kind of like, listen to him, you become what you focus on. John wants to be like a little mini psychologist. And one day I was in his office, and I was, uh, I don't know what I was talking about, but after I said it, I thought, hey, Tim Hooper, I was just talking about you, buddy. Your energy always attracts more people to you. We want to be around happy, energetic people. But I was talking to John, and I thought I presented a great case to John. And he just kind of looked at me, and he's like, man, you really, rejection really bothers you. You really take rejection personally, don't you? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. My bounce back back then, I would take things so personally. You know people, maybe you even do it yourself. You take things so personally. Post what I feel. Don't worry about likes and comments. Full of injury, full of focus. Well, I'm going to tell you this, uh, Carrie Latham. For me, I had to t develop that mindset. I was going to do what I wanted to do, and I was going to attract people that had similar beliefs that I did. 
I wanted to be around people. I wanted, I wanted to attract people that wanted more good time Tommy. Some people were offended by it. Some people, fear equals the absence of love. John, tell us more. Tell us more about rejection. Why, why do you think, John, why do you think people struggle so hard to bounce back? People come in if one little setback. My buddy Tim Dutton was telling me a story about some people can go over a speed bump and it's just like driving over a little speed bump where some people drive over a speed bump and it just knocks them completely off course. How do you prevent that from happening? Well, man, JJ's got all kind of deep stuff. He is a psychologist. But think about it. how how do you handle when things don't go your way? How do you how are you going to get better at it? Or if you don't fo if you don't focus on handling it different than you've handled it so far, you're going to continue to handle it the same way. It's the same thing is going to keep repeating. Hey, we've had a lot of people share this tonight. I feel like I gotta be quiet in here tonight, Kathleen, so I know you're gonna get on me about my energy, but I don't wanna wake the house up. Cause it's usually my bedtime right now, by 8.36. But people have to get more, they've gotta get past the sensitivity. Read the answer, I might read that. See John, if everything does come back to the childhood, like John Etheridge said, wide at heart, the wound is created early in life. You encourage what you tolerate, Brittany Brene. And you know what? I don't think there's any way a child can have a perfect child. There's no way a kid can have a perfect childhood. There's going to be something that's created that's going to that kid's going to have to deal with. So for me, being an only child, I non-conscious brain cannot take. Matt, Matt Crane, but why do you feel attention is very important in my business? I feel like that because like you said today, and what I do, I sell houses. And there's probably 1,500 people that I compete against. How can I stand out and look different? How can I get people to look at me? Some people say things you see or you. Well, okay, the non-conscious brain or whatever that that is is something that's kind of recorded everything from our past. John John was talking about this in a meeting. So everything that's happened in our past, that's I think that's where we get our gut feelings. I think that's where we get our reactions from is our past. We don't even really, our, we probably never really get out of that. Most of the time, that's just what we go with, is our non-conscious probably makes our decisions. Would you say that's right, John? Our past, what or what we've heard from somebody, whatever we can, it's things that we don't even know that we've been exposed to probably is while we're making our decisions or the way we feel or our comments. Yeah. That's right. How do people get past? John, how do you get past your non-conscious? What you've always thought? Hey, Doug Atkins. Thank you for joining, buddy. Hope you'll be in the gym tomorrow. How do you get past what your non-conscious has really taught you? It's really, it's really in control of you. For me... Thank you, Mama. Refrain, retrain it. For me, I did have to retrain it. And it takes a long time to retrain the way you think. It takes a long time to retrain. That's right, you, you should wake up every day and tell yourself something very positive. You gotta get in that mindset to attract more positive energy towards you. Michael Burt made a post this, this week that was awesome. It was like, get your head out of your past. I thought that was a great post. Get your head out of your past. 
first person. I, I will do great things today. I will. I got you, John. Tell yourself in first person what you're going to do. And if you keep doing that, if you keep doing that, he says like, in, like it's already happened. I had a great day today. I did this. Whatever it is that's important to you. I am. Okay. I got you. And I think the more you keep affirming this or the you're building your belief in yourself, because so much of this comes down to how you believe in yourself. Confidence. John Jones enjoys making a million dollars a year. Huh? Hey, that's a, you deserve it though, buddy. Terry, you're right. Everybody, you know, sometimes we look at somebody and we just assume, like, let's take John. Hey, my hero. I get to go to work, work uh, watch work every, every day. He... I see all the things he has to deal with. I used to think, man, John doesn't have to deal with hardly anything. Now, I'll come over to his office, and it's like a little assembly line of problem after problem after problem after problem. <laughs> it's just one after another. Think about how mentally strong he is, how he's got to overcome that stuff. Some people, if one little transaction doesn't go the way they want, they freak out about it. How would you feel if by 10 o'clock you've had 10 of them not go your way? But that, hey, again, that's a muscle that gets trained. You get used to it, your, 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 your emotional toughness. That's something else people need to work on. Challenges, not problems. There's mental toughness, and then there's emotional toughness. You got to emotionally work on your toughness, your emotional toughness. And I think that really goes back to not taking things so personally, not taking everything problems. Pro hey, just an issue to fix. Let's just challenge it. Hey, let's just say, hey, we got to fix this. That's right, Teresa. But don't take things so personally. Understand that that's just the way it is. Up to solve problems. Hey, Dave Thomas, our favorite Riverdale quarterback. Thank you for joining. Which is harder, mental or toughness? Exactly what do you mean, weatherman? Which are you talking about? Which toughness, mental or physical toughness or mental or emotional toughness? Which one are you talking about? We need to get to the bottom of that question, whether man, about what you're asking, buddy. I know, I, I think I know what you're asking, but I'm not exactly sure what what you're asking. Physical toughness. I think emotional toughness is the hardest thing for me. I'm an emotional guy. I can get through physical stuff. Whether man having typos, mental or physical toughness. Well. I do think there's there's a difference between mental toughness and emotional toughness. Other people may not agree, but I think you can be, I think there's mental, physical, and emotional toughness. So emotional toughness for me is, it may be things that I can't control that I've got to deal with, or relationships, getting over those, I feel like that's that's emotional toughness. I don't know the definition of how you de how you decipher between mental and uh, emotional toughness. Stevie Z, maybe I've got somebody on here can can explain the difference between mental and emotional toughness. But I think the I think the hardest part for us is getting over emotional things, emotional toughness. I think that's what I struggled with for, for so long. Kathleen, how do you keep sharing that? No. 
Hey, everybody that's uh, shared this, I really do uh, appreciate the share and the likes and all the comments. Renee Boda, uh, you're asking me why. Which, what, what question? Um, I think we're talking about emotional and mental toughness, but I'm not ex exactly sure. Well, I've gotten a lot better. I've gotten a lot better with emotional toughness, Renee, because like John was saying, I've uh, retrained my my mind. I don't. I didn't take. I I used to probably take things so personally. It was much harder for me to overcome it. But now I just understand. Hey, I, under, I you you think the way you think. I think the way I think. I feel the way I feel. You feel the way you feel. I don't take it as personally. So in the past, I would take it as such a rejection. When when I. I, it doesn't matter to me anymore. I don't care as much as I used to. Some people are so, they feel so much value in being right or convincing somebody to believe what they believe or, or, or getting them to be their friend or whatever their motive is. I don't look at things like that anymore. It'll get you. Joey, do you know them emotions will get you? It's so, like, yeah, I guess your emotions getting mad and controlling like whenever you're whenever you're in an argument how well can you keep your composure whenever somebody does something can you slow down and think without reacting can you understand their side of the story that was the emotional toughness was so hard for me i didn't even know what it was forever but emotional toughness was the hardest thing I'm far from tough on people, whether man mental is knowing the next move, emotional is being able. Okay, okay. Thank you, Carrie Late. The mental is knowing the next move, emotional is being able to hang when there's a crisis or criticism. You know, I could I could deal with things that I knew what were coming or or what has happened. The emotional stuff for me, Carrie, was a major struggle, and that's why my bounce back was limited because my emotional toughness was not where it needed to be. It was not very good at all. There's ways you can work on your emotional toughness. I believe by by you got to learn how to build your own self confidence. So you've got to find a way to to believe in yourself, and that's an all that's an internal job. That's not external. External job will not. You're not going to solve anything by working on the outside, because it's all about the way you think, the way you believe. I believe everything helped. I, I believe everything comes from from within. So you've got to build from the inside out. And emotional toughness is something that that you can work on. Doug DeMumbrim, how do you how do you handle whenever a sale that you think you're going to get does not go your way? How do you handle that, Dougie Fresh? Tell me that. How do you handle when a week of sales don't go your way? Weather man, you got you got unlimited potential, buddy. My daughter's father is trying to figure out what word was those words. Teresa, I couldn't read all that stuff. Ask more questions, but uh, Teresa, it is hard to get over those things. It's so hard to pour your your uh, life, your heart, your soul into something and it doesn't go the way you thought. And that could be relationships, that could be in work, it could be in friendships, but those are hard things to get over. But we've got to find a way. Sometimes and sometimes it takes time to heal all that. Sometimes people get hardened up to where they don't pre they they prevent that. They don't let it get there. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> Thank you, Dougie. Move on. 
motivate. What are you saying, Mama? Move on motivation. I've been going about 50 minutes. I'm going to lose my voice, but I'm going to go back through the, the three things that helped me get my bounce back. Was committing to do more. You had to do more, but sometimes it's not about you. Sometimes it's not about you when things don't work. Teresa, you're right. And that probably makes it even harder when it's not about you. You're exactly right. Sometimes it's it, it could be a lot of different things, but when it's when it's not about you, how how do you get past it? How do you move on? What are you telling yourself to get through this to move on? Because you make it happen. You're right, mommy. You got to make it happen, but you've got to put yourself in a position to know how to make it happen. You, you've got you've got to train your mind. Like John was saying about, I love that you have emotion that you're a human. Our talks. Blah. I am human. I am emotional. Hey, I, I was raised by a single mama. Anytime you're raised by a single mama, you're going to probably grow up emotional and half-ass crazy like a woman. Ain't that right, mama? My mama made me emotional. Kathleen, I appreciate it so much. I don't know if people have noticed the pickup in the in the team's social media, but man, Kathleen has uh, Kathleen Sparkle McWilliams has done such a good job in helping me and the team tell our unique story. And one of these days, somebody's going to come uh, steal her away from me. Then I'm going to have to get over the emotional. Uh, train wreck while well, you have control over you. You're right. Everything is, you've got to control you, Teresa. You're exactly right. It's all about you. Forever, I, I, I can think back to relationships where somehow I would try to manipulate them so I could control them. And when you do that, you're only going to make yourself, uh, it's going to make yourself miserable. Hey, single moms are, they can be tough. My mom, hey, I was telling Brittany, my mama was tough on me. I mean, tough. She had to be, though. She is fun to work with, weatherman. She has a, she has found, Kathleen has found out, she has found what she's supposed to do. Whenever you find what you're supposed to do, it never feels like work. I know when Kathleen's working, I'll see an Instagram post or a Facebook post, and it's 10 o'clock or, or 5, 4 o'clock in the morning. I think she loves to do what she does, and she's she's only been doing it, I feel like, a few weeks full-time, weatherman, but one of these days, she's going to be very special. She's going to be, Kathleen is going to be the best brand builder in Murfreesboro because she's getting trained by Matt Crane. Hey, I don't like to read my own stuff. But do I, do I have any questions before I uh, shut it down? I, everybody that's on here, I really appreciate you. <laughs> John, I was scared of the weather because my grandmother was scared of the weather. She scared me. She She scared me all the time. Can't read a boss at all. Rush impact. Yeah, Matt Crane, thank you for coming in today. We really appreciate that. People are getting on here. It's a little late. Do we, do we have any questions? But I do feel like my lack of bounce back for all those years, it really prevented me from moving forward. That's why all my buddies got ahead of me. All my friends were making more money. They were having more success because of my inability to bounce back. I think the Blackman area will continue to grow. I think there's a lot of things that are going to continue to grow over here. As a matter of fact, a lot of people feel like one day the interstate is going to be the middle divide between East Murfreesboro and West Murfreesboro. And I say, 
West Murfreesboro, that's the Blackman area. So I see a lot of growth coming in the Blackman area. Amy Kane, our proud sponsor, premier title, the the best in the business. Ain't that right, weather man? Nobody's better than Amy Kane. Yeah, there's a lot of things I think that are going to continue to come over here. Danielle, I understand why why you feel that way. It's very hard to not take it personally. But but you you've got to get whatever you've got to start telling yourself. You've got to start talking to yourself and asking yourself why are you taking it personal? And you've got to. You've got to realize whatever it is you're trying to control is a lot of times it's out of your control. You can only, like Teresa said, you can only control yourself. What what are you what what are you taking so personal? And sometimes you're probably taking something personal that wasn't intended for you to take anyway. Sometimes the big guy upstairs is trying to lead you down a path and you're resisting it. Are you listening to what he's telling you? What he's showing you? Everybody loves Amy Kane. Hey, Barry Campbell, thanks for joining. I think, uh, I don't know exactly what's going to happen on the square yet. I do think there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things going on around there. Um, Right now, I would say I'm positive about this square. I, I think it's going to do well. The the other part of MTSU, I've got the most faith in things that are closer to the interstate, but I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities around the square. That's that's my belief. But I do think it's risky because it's very unproven at this time. But and and something could happen around that area. What if? Uh, what if uh, someone were to buy a house over off uh, South Highland or that somewhere in that area and they build uh, two houses on one lot? What if somebody buys a block and they start putting little, um, the, some kind of fancy little uh, townhomes or brownstone apartments? John was telling me that somebody is buying some land in the downtown area, and it's going to be fancier downtown living uh, townhomes, two two twenty five, two fifty price points. So if things like that come here and they work, there's going to be a lot more of it. What if what if um, the city would allow you to tear down a house and build two back? Who knows? I do think it's early, and somebody's going to have to take that risk. Melanie Davenport. And Judy Goldie, they built their house over there. It's one of the nicest houses in Murfreesboro. So if uh, if if people as smart as they are are doing that, I would say they probably know something or believe something. And I would always bet on Melanie Davenport. Look at her. Look at what she's done. Take sales personal because it hinders you to. Th That's right, Doug. You can't take a sales personal because it will it will kind of be a roadblock moving forward. Need to break into landscaping, turf, and irrigation market in Murfreesboro. What can I do? Area is going crazy. Well, I believe everything's about networks. You got to get with people that that can help you do that. BJ got to get around people that uh, can get you business. You got to get attention. You get with people like Matt Crane who specialize in in helping tell your story. But BJ, you get with one person that could totally change everything and just create your business like um, Dean Higby. He uh, owns South Branch. John Floyd was his one person that changed everything. It's the one guy that he needed to meet. Now, a lot of things have happened since then, and I'm not taking anything away from Dean because obviously he is a highly successful guy, but it it really can, if you can make one huge contact or five 
good contacts. It can totally change everything. We got any more questions before I shut? I've been going an hour. I'm trying to get these things down to 30 minutes, but. Danielle, do you have any other questions, friend? But to get to get better, a better understanding, I think uh, you know I've never been a Tony Robbins guy, but I, I've I've listened to more of his stuff lately, and I think you need to listen to people like Tony Robbins who can help give you um, more inspirations on your on yourself. You gotta, you gotta stop giving people around you more power than you're giving yourself. Hmm. I don't know. Well, hey, don't look at it as you're good for now, Danielle. You're good, period. Because everything's under your control. Everything is in your control other than what's already been decided. So, guys... The show's dwindling down. I think a lot of people have jumped off. But um, bounce back is one of the things that, that slowed me down, held me back. Things would, uh, it took too long in in my life to get over things. BJ thinks you're growing big in Nashville, but want to make connections. Come on down here, BJ. Danielle, people are sold on the three things, price, product, people. Be fine. Dwayne, I, I want to sell people on me. I never want to sell my price because if you get into a price war, you're probably giving away things. I want to sell me. And I think everybody on here needs to be able to sell themselves. Because that should be the product. You should be the product. You're the relationship, my opinion. Jenny, Jenny Hutchins, you still on here? Brittany, you, are you asleep in there? But uh, bounce back was the one thing that, that it, it just held me back. I took things too personally. Um, you're right, you're right. Because some people do decide on price and some people do decide on product. But I can't think of anything else other than those three things. I agree with you. But every Thursday night, I'm going to do this 8 o'clock. And I like, uh, I like, uh, that's right, man. Dwayne, you're exactly, you're the only one that makes it different. Well, Doug, great salespeople sell good products. It's hard to sell something if you don't believe in the product. Randy, hopefully you guys can come out to Lane's Trains Automobile BJ, my buddy Joey Holt's got some irrigation jobs for you if you want to get into it. And good luck to your Wildcats, Randy. See, by getting on here, BJ, Joey Holt, big landscaper in town, he's got some irrigation jobs. This may have helped you. This may have been worth it for you just by getting on here. And this is something else, everybody. I'm uh, Network with the people that are in this stream. Maybe they can help you. Hey, you're in there watching that show. Well, I'm going to have to shut this down. But uh, next Thursday night, I will come up with something. I always want to make it rele relevant to something I've experienced, something I've over had to overcome because it's got to be my story. And I'm hoping to get people that are, um, I'm hoping to get people tuned in that have gone through tough times. Because I'm just getting started in how tough my story was. Immature kid. But everybody on here, I, I, want, I want to tell you this. Start reading more. Start start watching more YouTube. Start, start paying attention more so to learning as opposed to whatever it is, whatever it is you're doing. Hey, you on season seven, Doug? We're about to go in there and watch Frank Gallagher herself before I fall asleep. I should have already been asleep. But, uh, guys, thank you for sharing. Or thank you for uh, coming on here tonight. Thank you for liking it. And I really appreciate the people that shared it next Wednesday or next Thursday 
8 o'clock, as always, I will do straight from the gut. And I'm talking a lot about my painful past. Because we can all, hey, we all should be able to uh, understand a painful past. We all don't know what it's like to be Michael Jordan. But we all should know what it's like for to feel something that sucks. So that's the point of the show is to talk about overcoming things, share painful stories, and work on ways to get better. Because I've had a lot of success over the last few years that... Ten years ago, people would say, hey, that's never going to happen to that guy. That guy right there, that's never going to happen for him. He's too, uh, Brent, where have you been? Kim Neese. When are you going to come see the house, Kim Neese? Kim Neese is one of those people that knew me back in my day. Half-ass guy. Happy selling and stuff. Brent, if you need anything with that new baby coming this weekend, let me know. Well, I'm glad you're back on here, but I'm about to shut it down. But I like doing this. This is one of my passions. That's right, Teresa. It's it's a memory. It's history. It's hard to get past our... This is where it really goes. Thank you. Carrie Latham talked about what emotional was, emotional toughness. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll watch Lux for you, buddy. As long as I'm just let her play with Lucky. Guys, I'm going to shut this down unless there's any last second questions that you got. I'm going to go in there, and um, it's bedtime. I'm gonna, hopefully, my back won't hurt too bad, and I'll be in the gym in the morning. But do more. Have a bigger focus. Have a better understanding of what rejection is. Don't take things so personally. Stop being so sensitive. Cynthia Martin, friend, stop by here and see us. Adam Wright is going to be in town next uh, Friday. Cynthia, maybe you can... Uh, Come in. Hey, Jennifer Warner. Love you, Mama. I think Ken's going to come out and take the slingshot this weekend. So, Jessica, we can't do it without you, friend. Blair, you're an hour late, man. I'm sitting here wondering where the hell's Blair? And you finally get on here an hour late. Who here? But you were on here early. Early, I'm just kidding. All right, guys, I'm about to shut this down. It's my bedtime. I've lost my voice. Um, ben, I saw your brother today. Stragglers. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. Every Thursday night, I'm going to do this show called Straight from the Gut, and it's going to be very, tonight I was kind of tame, but it is going to be very, uh, it's going to be uh, my, my authentic, genuine, true story. And I want to help other people overcome things that I went through. And unfortunately, I think the way we learn, thank you, Ben Dodson, the way we learn is by going through pain, unfortunately. So most people won't listen. But you, uh, if you go through uh, what I went through, you're either, you're either going to sink or you're going to swim. So... Hey, let's drink some margaritas, Jessica. Everybody, I'm shutting it down. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for the likes, the comments, and the shares. See you next Thursday at 8 o'clock, friends.